few frames on Tuesday, spline frames. And funny enough, I've never made spline frames before. And it's funny because that's probably the bulk of my work is making frames. And uh, these frames were made specifically for a client. He wanted a very minimal look. And that's why we used walnut on the splines where you would think you might want to use a contrasting wood. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do later on today. Uh, but to make this project, I threw together a real quick jig and I feel like I could improve upon the jig and it, now that I'm going to want to make more spline frames it would be nicer to have a better jig. So I'll have a material and cut list on my website and you can just search uh, spline frame jig and uh, you'll find that there. I'm going to get started with a piece of half inch MDF. You could use plywood, maybe even three quarter plywood, really whatever you have hanging around the shop. And this piece measures 13 and a half by 17. I'm going to bring it over to the table saw and locate and then mount runners at the bottom because this is going to work exactly like a crosscut sled. I'm using shims that I've cut to a sixteenth of an inch and these will prop the runners just a little bit above the surface of the table saw. Now I'll add a little wood glue. My fence is set at eight and a half inches and now I'll hold the sled tight against the fence I've got three quarter inch nails in the nail gun and making sure I'm tight against the fence. I'll tack the front and the back. Okay, well, it's not moving as smooth as I'd like it to, but a little wax ought to help that. I'm going to use my pencil and put a mark where the blade is. And I'll use the bandsaw to clean up the overhang. Now I'll measure over an inch and a quarter from the mark that represents where the blade is. And use a framing square and trace a line. The next step is to attach the front and back of the jig and for this I'm using 3 quarter inch birch plywood that I've already ripped to 3 inches. I'll cross cut it to 17 inches long which is the width of the sled and attach it with glue and a few nails. It's also really important to not put any nails that are in line with the blade. So put an indication mark on the bottom of the sled and just avoid that area when you're nailing these parts together. Next I'm using a piece of five quarter poplar and this measures just about a heavy inch. If you don't have five quarter poplar you can glue a piece of quarter inch plywood to a piece of three quarter inch plywood. You could glue two pieces of three quarter inch plywood and make it an inch and a half. It really doesn't matter. The important part is that you measure six and a half inches from the end of the board, put a line, and you're going to cut a miter. Now I'm going to beef the block up a little bit. I'll mark a line at the short point of the miter and cut it back. The last piece on the jig is this piece of five quarter and this is the off cut from the first miter. 
One thing I forgot to mention is the five quarter poplar measures two and a half inches wide and I attached it to the jig an inch and a quarter from the blade so the blade will come up through the center of the jig. Okay, well now that I've finished with the jig, I'm gonna move on to making a frame. And if you like to make small frames, it's really a good way to get rid of some of the small odds and ends that just tend to kick around the shop for a while. And this is a nice piece of cherry. It measures just about eight and a half by nine inches. And I'll get started by ripping this into two inch strips. Next, I'll cut a rabbit joint into the frame and I'll measure down about a half of an inch from the top of the frame and I'll measure in about a quarter of an inch from the inside of the frame. This area will be removed and I'll make this cut first. I've set the saw fence to 5 eighths of an inch, raised the blade, and now I'm ready for the next cut. This frame is going to be a square frame, and the nice thing about a square frame is all four sides are the same length, so you only need to measure once and then put a mark on the fence. Okay, well I let the glue set up overnight and now I'll untape the frame, bring it over to the jig and cut the slots. Since I like to put the splines in different places for different frames, I line the frame up just above the jig. I've got a piece of painter's tape over the jig so I can just pull the tape off and I don't have pencil lines on the main block here. And for this, I'm going to put a line about 3 8 from the saw curve. And I'll do the same thing for the back of the frame. And then when I make the spline cuts, I'll hold the frame at that line and just spin the frame around. And then I'll move the frame over and I'll hold the back of the frame at this line. For this frame I'm using walnut splines and since I'm really not comfortable trying to rip material at an eighth of an inch thick, it's just not really safe, I've put a mark on my table saw insert and I'll move the fence over until the outside of the board is even with that mark and I'll use the off cut for the splines. I'm going to let the glue set up on this frame for a few hours, but I did put together a few other frames yesterday. This is a tiger maple frame, and these are white oak frames, and two of them are, the wood is really pretty interesting to me because these boards have been hanging around the shop for at least a decade, and the reason for that is they've got beautiful quarter saw and white oak figure on one side of the board, but then the other side has huge checks running right through the board, and I just didn't want to throw it away and I think I finally found a good project for them. I aligned the splines 
so they avoid the checks and I think the frame will hold together just fine and it will have kind of a nice character to it. So the next step is to go ahead and cut the splines flush with the frame and I'll use the bandsaw for that. After I cut the splines flush with the frame, I set the table saw to a three degree angle and slightly tapered the frame from the front to the back. And it's just a little thing, but I think it, it makes a difference. It makes the frame look that much more elegant. And sometimes it's just the little things that make the difference. Now, if you think you want to make this jig, you can find the plans on my website. Just search spline jig. And if this is the first time you've tuned into my channel, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. Um, I always appreciate the thumbs up and I'm doing a lot more with Instagram and that might be a little bit more uh, seeing a little bit of a window into my life uh, yesterday, like just some, per not personal, personal things, but just uh, for instance, I put my son Michael's wrestling match up. He made an Instavid out of his match last night and I put that up and I thought it was great because of course I was there videoing with the phone and he was getting slammed. Uh, I, it almost made me want to stop taking video, but then he turned it around and ended up winning by three points. So I'm really proud of him. And he turned it into an instant vid with this Audio Slave song in the background. I thought it was pretty cool. So uh, if you want to see that, you can see it at my Instagram. I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.